Are you loving the layering stencil sets as much as me? Today I have the Hill Blossoms layering stencil set from Alta New and it is just that has lots of beautiful blossoms and leaves and it's kind of a trailing image. You'll see it in a minute. <laughs> Anyway, it, I'm going to go through all the different layers of the stencil with you today and also share a tip on how to centre a panel for your card front. So let's get started. Hi there, it's Therese and Lost in Paper and this stencil is gorgeous as you can see. It's a two-piece stencil. On the packaging you can find what the finished image is going to be looking like but also the layering guide. You can find the layering guide at Alter New as well if you go into the actual product itself and often there'll be a video explaining it as well but I thought I'd go through it with you here today. It's a really easy bouquet or flower set of blossoms that we can line up. I've got a piece of Nina 80 pound cardstock here and I've got the base layer of the leaves which is according to the layering guide where I need to start. On the layering guide as well it will tell you whether you need to use a darker or a lighter ink but basically, basically it goes from lighter to darker. I'm starting with the classic Ulta New inks here. I've got the frayed leaf and just using the ink blending tool. Now this is the larger of the blending tools. You could use the smaller one if you have that but I found by protecting my cardstock with the post-it notes I didn't seem to have a problem. It is really easy to control and also really easy to put colour down onto the Nina through the stencils. So the second layer is going to be a darker layer. I'm using the Forest Glades color. I did line up the stencil according to the layering guide on the packaging and one thing to be aware of with the dye inks is that as they dry they will go a little bit lighter. So if you're looking for a real kind of bold finished look you can actually come in with a darker color and that's gonna not lighten so much as it dries. So the flower images or the blossoms themselves line up within these leaves. I have got the Northern Shore set of inks. It's a really pretty kind of blue violet, uh, blue purpley colors and I did actually shout myself some new post-it notes for this because I didn't want to accidentally contaminate the blue with the green, especially this really light coloured blue. So you can actually tell by looking at the stencil which section needs to be coloured next because there's the cuts within the stencil are smaller and they're going to be the darker shaded bits. If you're not sure I did find that laying it on top of the flowers that I'd already done you can kind of work out where it needs to go otherwise I just kept that guide beside me and I could just refer to that if I needed to. Now these blues are really pretty and there's actually four different layers for these flowers so I just kept, kept, <laughs> I just kept making the colors darker until I got to the very center of the flowers and I actually came in and added the center of the flowers with the jet black ink. I I haven't used I don't use the jet black ink very much at all anymore because I either use the permanent black ink or the obsidian which I could have certainly used either of those but for some reason I grabbed the jet black today. It is a really nice dark black ink though. Now for the final reveal. Drum roll. How pretty is that flower? So if you've been here before you might have already seen this tip but I thought I'd share it today. I have a piece of scrap cardstock with an A2 window cut out of it 
it may have looked like I just stamped my image in the middle of nowhere but this just gives me lots of options to work out exactly how I want this to be on my card or the placement and you can tell this stencil actually works so many different ways but what I did was I did another one <laughs> So I did exactly the same stenciling again and what I've done is I'm holding over my window of my A2 card and I've drawn pencil marks on two sides. Now I can simply use my paper trimmer to cut down along one of those pencil marks and then when I cut along my second pencil mark I need to make sure that the first edge that I cut is the one that is butted up against my paper trimmer edge and that has two of my rectangles my A2 sides cut to work out the other two cuts I simply just eyeball it by holding it over my card base and making a tick mark with my pencil then when I do these cuts I just need to make sure that I have the sides that I've already cut butted up against my trimmer and that's gonna mean that I end up with a A2 sized card front panel cut exactly where I saw it with the window of my template. The sentiment today I've used the Fairy Tale Florals stamp set and I've just stamped a two piece sentiment here in some obsidian black ink. I want to add a few black splatters, I know, don't judge me, and I have protected my sentiment here with some scrap cardstock because we've all been there. <laughs> and then I simply just added this to the front of a top fold card base. And I was really careful when I was adding it that I didn't touch the wet ink that I just splattered on there because then that would have been a sequin moment. <laughs> so I do hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial and if you did it'd be great if you could click on the thumbs up button and if you haven't already it'd be wonderful if you could subscribe to the channel. I appreciate every visit you make here. Until next time, happy paper crafting. Bye!